The Pfizer vaccine is coming to the UK. Soon it'll be heading to other countries too, and a huge operation is underway. I, I strongly urge uh, people to, to take up the vaccine, but it is no part of our, our culture or our ambition in this country uh, to make uh, vaccines mandatory. That's not how we do things. For the world at large, normalcy only returns when we've largely vaccinated the entire global population and the entire global population and the entire global population. I have met this afternoon with representatives of the British Army who will be in the school next week to test all our students and staff. Each child and adult will be identified with a unique barcode to ensure personal identification of test and subsequent results. They're going to give each child and adult a unique barcode. Quite, have, have you heard something so inhuman? If positive results are received, the school will secure the individual concerned and in case of students, inform parents carer immediately. We will then operate our usual process of identifying others who may have been in close or direct contact for our self-isolation system will be put in place. Under normal circumstances, parental permission is sought for the testing of children. However, under these very challenging and unprecedented circumstances, that is not possible. Therefore, we would ask that if you wish to exclude your child from this test, please do so in writing to me first thing on Monday morning. In a nutshell, they don't need to, or they think they don't need to ask for parental permission. I'm and Kelly Taylor standing by this morning with some breaking news from the Five Alert desk. So Joe, that breaking news, it's a first look at the COVID-19 vaccination record card you'll get once you get a shot. This is what it looks like here. The Department of Defense released that first image yesterday along with an image of vaccination kits, which include a card, a needle, syringe, alcohol wipes and a mask. Health officials say everyone will be issued a written card they can put in their wallet and that tells them what shot they had and when their next dose is due. Vaccination clinics will also report to their state immunization registries and every dose administered will be reported to the CDC. Next, immunization cards are coming. The Welsh government says anyone who's vaccinated will get one and it's likely that in lots of countries you'll need proof of vaccine to do certain things. And we know an international travel pass is also in development. It will be in the form of an app on a passenger's phone. So the data, for example, a coronavirus test result that is negative could be stored on there and also proof of a vaccine. The Australian airline Qantas is going further, suggesting it'll only take passengers who've had the jabs. And if airlines can exert pressure, so can countries. We know this from the control of yellow fever. These countries in Africa are on a long list of places you can't visit unless you've had the yellow fever vaccine. Something similar may happen with COVID. Australia's Prime Minister says there could be options where people have the choice of two weeks of quarantine or being vaccinated. I think that will be an incentive, he adds. And if that's how we'll be encouraged, in some countries, the case for mandatory vaccines is also being made. This may only apply to specific jobs, and there's a precedent for this. For example, some health workers in the US and Finland have to get a flu jab. US authorities suggest the same could happen with COVID. More broadly, the New York Times reports that Joe Biden's transition team is discussing the possibility of mandating the vaccine in the US via the government or via employers and schools. That too has precedent. In Australia, some state payments are tied to children being vaccinated and France and Italy have a number of compulsory vaccines for children. I mean, throughout the pandemic, employers have been facing so many difficult decisions when it comes to furloughs and layoffs. And like you said, the next big question is going to be whether they can and whether they should require their employees to take a vaccine when it becomes available. Um, and just looking historically back at other vaccines, the general answer is that, yes, employers can require their employees to get vaccinated as a condition of employment. Vaccines are useless if they are not uh, uh, used to vaccinate. 
And that's a cause for concern. In France, the Prime Minister says, my fear is that not enough French people will get vaccinated, which is why there's going to be a lot of encouragement in a range of forms. The first is reassurance on the safety of this vaccine. What have you found is the key to encouraging or convincing community members to buy into the measures that keep them safe? Well, we had uh, vaccine resistance with polio, and they're getting the religious leaders uh, to speak out, to have them uh, visibly vaccinating their own children. Some politicians are even offering to get the jab on TV. If I thought it would help persuade anybody to do it, I will do it. According to British media reports, Queen Elizabeth II and her husband, Prince Philip, may go public with the announcement of receiving a vaccine once the royal couple has been inoculated against COVID-19. Former U.S. presidents Barack Obama, George W. Bush and Bill Clinton have all said they were willing to be vaccinated against COVID-19 on television in order to ease any public skepticism over the safety of the new vaccines. In an interview with Sirius XM Radio that aired Wednesday, Obama said he would do his vaccination on television so that, quote, people know that I trust this science. Bush, Obama's predecessor and a Republican, is willing to get a vaccine on camera once the U.S. Food and Drug Administration grants emergency approval, according to Freddie Ford, Bush's chief of staff. Democratic President Bill Clinton who left office in 2001, said he would take the vaccine as soon as it was available to him and he will do it in a public setting. An FDA panel of outside advisors is due to meet on December 10th to discuss whether to recommend emergency use authorization of a vaccine developed by Pfizer with German partner BioNTech, shown to be 95% effective at preventing illness. U.S. health officials predict the first inoculations could start days or weeks later. Moderna's vaccine, which employs similar technology as Pfizer's and was nearly 95% effective in its pivotal trial, is expected to be reviewed a week later. This news comes as a significant minority of Americans are skeptical of the science behind vaccinations and wary of the record speed at which COVID-19 vaccines have been developed. So I promised a conversation about vaccines. Let me just get some basic things on the table. Uh, why are the Brits first? You know, I, in all fairness to so many of my UK friends, you know, they kind of ran around the corner of the, uh, of the marathon <laughs> and joined it <laughs> in the last mile. <laughs> I think that would be a good metaphor for it, Major, because um, they really rushed through that approval. The, the, the FDA, the United States of America Food and Drug Administration, is the gold standard of regulation. They're doing it in a very careful way, appropriately, because if we did anything that was cutting corners and rushing, we have enough problem with people being skeptical about taking a vaccine anyway. If we had jumped over the hurdle here quickly and inappropriately to gain an extra week or a week and a half, I think that the credibility of our regulatory process would have been damaged and we would have had more people. You know, I love the Brits. They're great. They're good scientists. But they just took the data from the Pfizer company. And instead of scrutinizing it really, really carefully, they said, OK, let's approve it. That's it. And they went with it. In fact, they were even rather severely criticized by their European Union counterparts who were saying, you know, that was kind of a hot dog play.